In 1979, Sony introduced the first Walkman. And by the mid-1980s, the Walkman was a ubiquitous tool that we all had in our lives. I remember that first cassette I had. It was the Jay Giles Band freeze frame. And I walked around as a little kid singing the song Centerfold, not knowing what one was, but I had it in my Walkman. And then I had Michael Jackson's Thriller, and I had We Are the World. And the Walkman changed how we experienced music. It was the first step in personalizing music for all of us. And that Walkman touched us in our heart. And when we talk about innovation and the heart of innovation, we don't talk about romance with the heart. We look to the Latin root for heart, which is core. True innovation touches our core. True innovation changes how we behave and how we live. The word courage is strength of heart. When we look at our core, that's what we look towards for true innovation. And when we redefine innovation, I think we need to redefine innovation using a definition provided by Scott Anthony from the Innocite Institute. Real innovation is something different that has impact. Impact on our lives, impact on our core. And as educators, we want to have an impact on our students. And we want the education we provide to be something different that has an impact. We want to create that Walkman experience that changes how we do things. And there's a pathway to how we innovate. Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. The first step in innovation is having a dream. The first step in having an impact is having that dream. And when we have that dream, we socialize about it. We talk about it with our neighbors, with our friends, with our family, with our coworkers. Some businesses and industries have whole innovation divisions that they socialize their ideas. It goes from the dream to, the, to a social mind, then to paper. And we try it and we prototype it. But when is an innovation real? That last step in that innovation pathway is when it gets to your core. When the real innovation changes how we live, how we work, what we do, and it touches us in a different way. Now, when I look at the Mount Rushmore of innovation, there are four people that have ideas, that have seminal thoughts, that shape how we do innovation. Number one is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, as an innovator, knew what we want before we knew we wanted it. Real innovation is not waiting and responding. It's coming up with solutions before people know that they're the problems. And the other thing that Steve Jobs has done for all of us in our lives, innovation doesn't have an ending. Innovation is the continued evolution of those ideas, of that something. We have come to expect every year our new iPhone. We have come to expect the new products, the new updates, the continuation of getting better. The impact has changed our core. That Walkman is now in our pocket with unlimited songs and videos and emails and all of the things that we now just expect when we do what we do. Someone had a vision, they made an impact, it keeps getting better every day. Rena McGrath is on my Mount Rushmore of innovation, Columbia professor, futurist. If you get a chance to listen to her podcasts, it's, it's a great 50 minutes once a week. Rena McGrath teaches us your first idea is normally wrong. Get it in the field as fast as you can to test it and improve it and live it. Our first dream, our first idea, it's usually wrong. One of our problems in education is when someone fails, we give them an F. 
Failure is a step to success. Because that's what Thomas Edison taught us. That it's 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. We got to do the work to innovate. We've got to put in the sweat equity to get better each and every day. And on our Mount Rushmore of innovation, we're going to find 9,999 ways to fail. But when we find that one way to succeed, the incandescent light bulb comes on. We have to live and do the work. And finally, A.G. Laffley. A.G. Laffley is the CEO that turned around Procter & Gamble. And A.G. Laffley taught his company that the consumer is boss. When you're inventing, when you're innovating, when you're improving, you don't do it for you, you do it for your consumer. And you have to approach this with the curiosity of a child. He was big into qualitative research over quantitative research. How did the products make you feel? And some of the things P&G did were incremental in their innovation. We used to put Tide in our washing machine and then put Downy in our washing machine. They combined them. We used to wash our floors with a mop and a bucket. P&G invented Swiffer, because now we can just clean up that mess like this. The consumer's boss. And these four people have set a pathway for us to look at when we look at innovation, because we know that as leaders, and we are all leaders, Innovation comes from the culture that we create in our business, in our space, in our world. We get to create the culture that drives the behavior that gets to the results. And that culture is in our hearts. It's in our core. It's what we do. And in our schools, we must create a culture that has our students looking for successes and solutions to problems that aren't there yet. They have to learn that success is built on failures. And that's how we learn. And they have to learn that we're producing a better world, not for us, but for our consumers, for other people. This is the pathway. Because public education hasn't changed very much since any of us in this room went to school. I graduated high school in 1989, and if you gave me a schedule, I could walk Glastonbury High School and follow that schedule. It looks pretty similar to the way it looked in 1989. If public schools weren't publicly funded, we would be blockbuster. We have to do better. And as public schools, we have all the tools. We have the expertise. We have amazing teachers. We need to take the iPhone 1.0 and update each and every year. We need to continually get better, and we need to look at what Steve Jobs taught us. What do we need to be doing as public schools to prepare students for what's next when we don't know what's next? We need to look to the Mount Rushmore of innovation, to Mr. Jobs to say, what do we need to be producing? And what we've done during COVID, yes, while it's amazing, there's a difference between adapting to survive and innovating. And I can tell you as an educator, we live this every day. I don't know how many people tell me I can't wait to get back to normal. I can't wait till school gets back to normal. We didn't innovate during COVID. Our teachers were heroes and we used technology to survive. It hasn't changed what we do now. It's not innovation when your iPad or your Chromebook replaced your textbook, but you do things the same way. You just got a different tool to get the information. How do we innovate to get better? Changes that make an impact are long lasting. We've got to live that long lasting because we need to look at the future of work. When I think about education and I think about A.G. Laffley, who is our consumer? There are some who say the taxpayers are your consumers. You go ask for levies, they pay for the services. Mom and dad and your taxpayers are your consumers. There are some who say your students are your consumers. They sit in the classrooms and they consume the information that are provided to them by their teachers. I would argue our workforce are our consumers. We are providing a product to our businesses, to our industries, to those leaders in our country. We are providing a, a product that is our next generation of workers, of leaders, of doctors. 
When we look to our consumer, are we providing the workforce that we need from them, for them? It's got to be the question that we asked. We also have to innovate through personalization. We have to use the technology. We have to use the, the skills that we have to personalize for every kid. How is it that Google can put ads on my Facebook page that tell me what I want? Or Amazon can tell me what I'm going to buy before I know I'm going to buy it. But we give every kid the same reading assignment, the same word problems in their math book. We give every kid the same. How awesome would it be when a kid logged into that Chromebook to do their word problems in math if the word problems were personalized to their interests? We should be able to do this. We've got decades of test data. Shouldn't we be able to look at a third grade student who meets certain criteria and say, we know where they're going to be when they're seniors based on our analytics. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to turn the knobs and push the levers to change that slope and change that trajectory. We can do this. We should personalize education for every student. And we need to get into this analytic space. And we need to look at partnerships. We need to live the Thomas Edison sweat equity and build the partnership so we know where every kid needs to be and we know what our workforce needs to look like. We hear it from our business partners all the time. The heart of innovation, changing the core, is what we need to do. Because schools need to look different. Our biggest obstacle is our current core. Every mom and dad wants school to look like school looked like when they went to school. It's in our core. We're comfortable with school looking like school looked like when we went to school. Most of our teachers played school really well. Most of our teachers wanted to be teachers from an early age. Some of them set up the dolls in the basement and taught the dolls because they wanted to be teachers, they liked school. But should school continue to look like that? We have amazing teachers who do a great job. How do we provide the professional development to change the core? To go to the what's next, to meet the needs of our consumers. We've got a lot of work to do, but when we look at innovation through the eyes of those folks on Mount Rushmore, and we look at the heart of innovation and our kids that we get to serve each and every day. Our Mount Rushmore of innovation tells us we need to shift to do, do things differently, to provide a different product to our consumers. We need to get into the market and fail more quickly and fail forward and try new things and do new things as we personalize education for every kid. We need to do the work. We need to have the sweat equity to get done what we need to get done. And we need to focus on the consumer and the product that we do. Our next Mount Rushmore of innovation is going to look very different because our kids today are building the future. And when we think back to that Walkman, that 1980s device that we put on our hip with the felt little earphones and it changed how we listen to music, that went to a disc man. That went to an MP3 player. That went to an iPod. That went to an iPhone. School needs to go through the same iteration and improvement process. Because innovation that touches our heart inspires us. It inspires our core to do better. And that's what we must do as educators. Thank you very much.